All right, costuming friends, welcome to Cocktails and Costuming. Uh, I'm Gigi, and my obsessions are basically all things Italy, um, living history, uh, costuming, historical cosmetics, and historical hygiene. Um, today, I'm interviewing Amanda from at Amanda Poldark on Instagram. My big ask for this show is that you hit the subscribe button so you can be notified of all of the content that will be forthcoming on La Bella Donna. And also because I love knowledge sharing, I want to ask you to follow me. On Instagram, I'm at La Bella Donna History, Reenactors of Color, and BIPOC Reenactors. And if you're on Facebook, you can find me at the BIPOC Reenactors page. Um, and last but not least, housekeeping. So we have some house rules. One is, this is a no judgment zone. And I say that hesitantly because um, we might be judgy a little on this show, but it won't be about your clothing. Um, two, kindness matters. And so I endeavor to be kind um, to my interviewees, and I will also be kind in moderating the comments below. And last but not least, spread the love. Um, not only tell others about us, but tell us about who you'd like to see interviewed on the show so we can reach out um, to other costumers of color and ask them questions and highlight their endeavors. Um, so I think that's all. All right, let's get into our sip and chat with Amanda. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> okay, so before we get into the question questions that I like listed to you, um, I want to know about your Instagram handle. Okay, so I chose at Amanda Poldark because at the time I had, I think I had like some random like internet username thing before 2015, but then I started watching Poldark and I got really obsessed with it. I started recreating the costumes of each character from the show one by one, little by little, researching. And then I realized, let me just change my Instagram handle to Amanda Poldark since I'm already spamming photos of my costumes and recreations. I decided to add it. Uh, I also had at this time a costuming blog on Tumblr about like each episode and what the characters wore and why and sort of like a semi clap back to people complaining about the costumes on the show because oddly enough, they're more researched than what people believe they are. Um, there also were, there were some, you know, stylistic choices here and there, but it was actually more accurate to the period than a lot of people think. The because number one question I have for you, because this is cocktails and costuming. Sure. So what are we drinking? Okay, so in this is a port old-fashioned. I figured the Mel's favorite drink is port, so I had to make some cocktail based on port, and that was the first hit on Google, so yeah. Nice. It is... Port, uh, Tawny Port, not the Ruby Port, because it's a little bit aged, I guess. Um, bourbon and maple syrup. Maple syrup. There we go. Maple syrup. So yeah, and, and, add and it's supposed to be garnish of orange. I don't have. That's okay. okay. It's close enough. There's no no judgment zone. See, see. Hey. Right? So yeah. Um, that's basically our cocktail because uh, I actually am not much of a cocktail drinker morally, but I'm like. Mm, tasty and the maple syrup is sweet so it is i liked it so good choice chin chin and uh also what is the theme song for our chat just to set the vibe of how we feel today oh okay wow <laughs> i didn't this question i kind of you didn't it. think about this one i did i did not um i, no. I thought i knew what you were gonna say too i know i didn't really think about it because part of party was just like mm, i actually don't have a good answer you listen just I think the theme song for this chat should be like that music that they play when Ross is like riding the horse. Oh yeah, so something from, basically something from the soundtrack of yeah. Old Ark. Just picture the Stick and Dudley's music in there. That's kind of works. And Beach Waves. All right. <laughs> All right. Next question: What are your labels, and how did you acquire them? And you talked a little bit about this, but like yeah, I, I can go in that. You know, one um, has to adopt labels they don't want. So I want to know what you label yourself as cosplayer I guess first and foremost because I started off actually costuming in 2010. I grabbed some random stuff in a vintage store and decided to be Martha Jones from Doctor Who in time for New York Comic Con. Um, that went over very well and then that started a journey of me trying to find the actual pieces worn on the show. I followed the story through different characters, um, you know, cosplaying different characters, going to different Doctor Who's and British media events um polar kind of happened sort of it started in 2015 at a weird point in my life I was going to grad school and I was getting you know stressed and I had to 
come up with, you know, everybody has them write their, like, thesis or, like, master pro- master's project. So the, the show came into my life at that time, and it totally, like, got me through it. Of course, I had some great experiences as a result. Some not-so-great experiences, but that whole – it came into my life in a part, at a point when I kind of needed – some distraction from the real world and that's kind of how it started uh that i got the costumer sort of as a general term because i didn't really like saying that i'm a reenactor or live in historian because that's not really my name interest i have a lot of aside from costuming i freelance i'm a freelance journalist so i tend to write tv show reviews so like i'm very interested in the intersection of pop culture and history so okay a lot that's why i kind of costuming in general because i like i have it, it you know i have ideas about maybe making more historically accurate things and then i just keep getting derailed by you. nice okay that's me um so let's talk a little bit about some of your favorite creations um cool. or your favorite photo shoots so we have a couple of looks um I think the one I want to ask you about first is Georgiana Lamb from yeah. Sanderson. Is, that was my most, that was my last historical piece or anything historical before shutdown. Okay. So before this, so this photo basically, I came up with the outfit. I saw the photo. I saw the original um, promo picture all the way back. I think last July at. Um, Television Critics Association, PBS did an event for it. So I looked at it, realized, hmm, she's using a lot of fabric I don't, can't find. Especially yeah, the dress it. and the parasol, it's just parasol like- Parasol is actually one of their props. I didn't even have that. I grabbed one of my, the hat, well, that's like my old like summer vacation hat that I had like pinned into a bonnet. And I, though that was one of their props. So I was like, thank you guys. That was awesome. It's a great picture. Thank you. And of course, yeah, one of their photographer people took it. I was happy about that. Cause like, I've always, forever that person only taking stuff on their cell phone. I'm like, I need, you know, hide a picture. So yeah, this is mostly, this outfit was pretty much more pure ingenuity, um, more than a lot of what I've made because nobody else at that point had in America, at least, have seen the show A and B made a costume replica of from that show. And I haven't seen anybody do much since. <laughs> I've seen a couple people do general Regency Pat styles and nothing trying to recreate the show itself. Um, mm-hmm. So that was a fun experience. Uh, what happened online after said experience was a little bit interesting. Um, yeah, that fandom. How'd you tell? So, in the short of it, uh, <laughs> I called out the fandom for using pineapple emoji, you know, before then was, you know, psych fandom used it for years. Other people used it for fun. But in Sanderson, the pineapple scene is a racist conversation. It's about slavery and colonialism in the West Indies. So the fact that their fandoms were using it as kind of like a rallying cry on Twitter and elsewhere did not strike right with me. It felt very racist. So I spoke up about it, but of course, when you're that person who speaks up about issues, you end up getting absolutely dogpiled online. So that's what happened, of course. And because we all saw that scene, it was not nice. It so. wasn't good at all. And I didn't see it until it had already like aired. I, I was late to the party, so yeah. the spoilers didn't get to me. But if they were doing that, that's r- I mean, that's it was one really of, that's rude. On a lot of levels. It was, and also to the the problem with that fandom was that a lot of the people who were leading the fandom are European or white European people who don't understand how we as black Americans have to deal with the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm specifically Caribbean American, so I know very well when I see colonialist symbolism from the West Indies, like what that's supposed to look like. So Georgiana's character obviously was my favorite character on the show for that reason, because we have that connection of where they, she comes roughly from where, I, where my family's from. So I was like, this is crazy. What did not help is that the, even before the recent BLM protests, they were not understanding how offensive it was to African Americans and other Black people online. And then when the BLM protests came back, some of the cast started talking about that the show in relation to these issues. And 
that started a second wave of nonsense on Instagram where for a couple days straight, I just could not look at my Instagram because I was getting tagged and like people trying to defend themselves from what they did back in January, February. And I'm like, you guys are still missing the point. Calm down and listen. Listen, yeah. listen with both ears. The cast is listening with both ears. You guys aren't. Okay. Okay, so cast probably learned a lot between they did learn a lot. and now. I think yeah, they did. And UK fans have learned a lot between then and now. And okay. like I said in the house rules, kindness matters. Even if someone is saying something that you don't completely understand, listen, try to empathize, try to be compassionate, try to check your own biases before you yeah. get offensive. There was a lot of that. People not checking where your own biases are. And also two things is there's a lot of this history that they didn't learn themselves. Like, no, you were just offended. And it, it, offended. it's and hurtful also, stuff. It's hurtful exactly. personally. And when, when something is that hurtful and you speak out, to have it misconstrued as you wanting to, I don't know, grab some of the limelight or ruin someone else's fun, I mean, it just boils down to the fact that it was hurtful. It was. So, and then I started reviewing Outlander like I got paid by Denny Geek to review Outlander. So this sort of, I have professional experience. So Speaking of Outlander. I'm walking out of my butt. Like I went to journalism school and it's always because they don't picture black people at that time. And I'm like, hey, look, all these historians found all this evidence that we existed back then. And you guys don't care. That's yeah. great. And actually what I can do is put some links down below to some articles about just what yeah. you're doing. And yep. I'll actually, also, if your Twitter's still up, we can put that tag down yeah, below. Yeah, um, at Amanda R. Prescott is my Twitter still. Um, I crossed the 2,000 follower mark, which is really gay. I'm not uh, during this uh, saga, which I'm like, thanks, guys. The more you hate on me, I'm getting more followers. I'm like, huh. Funny how that works. Hey, maybe I can turn it into blue check mark, baby, one day. Um, so speaking of Outlander, since you brought up Outlander, yeah. uh, you have- dressed up as Claire. I have, yes. After I discovered Poldark 2015, the next step, of course, was dressing up as Claire, my favorite Outlander character ever. Um, so I had two different Outlander looks. I have her Scottish Claire look, um, which is, although I'm in front of a TARDIS, I mean, that's totally, that's just me in a nutshell. Doctor Who and period drama. Uh, so I have one of her Scottish Claire looks um, from season one. Um, I forgot what episode I'm specifically that one's from, but it's the tartan and the wool. Um, and the wool, you know, jacket on, on top of it. And then That's I have beautiful. Paris Claire from season two. I did not make Paris Claire. Um, That's the green one. My friend Danielle made that dress and then she decided to give it up because she wanted to move. And I was like, sure, I'll take your pretty dress because that fabric is really expensive. And it's, it is really pretty. Um, you. So you have another big dress. You dressed up as Queen Victoria from the Victoria PBS show, right? Yes, that is, that's, yeah, that's my big, that was sort of after the Outlander stuff started. That was, that's, that dress is an interesting story. I'm actually remaking it now because I, when I first did it, I used the Simplicity Snow White pattern, which is kind of wrong for, not even just for historical experts, it's just wrong, period. It's not the right shape compared to like what was seen on the show. Uh Um, Also too, I made it like, three years ago when I really did was just guessing a lot about things so I first made this with the intention of going to a Doctor Who convention that Jenna Coleman was going to but then she ended up canceling so there was a couple months where I was like okay I spent a lot of money on this dress because it's real silk I used Hmm, not really gonna get the chance to ever have go somewhere about it and then in November 2017 I got an email from sub from PBS saying, hey, we're having an event to promote season two. And I was like, oh, really now? Hmm, maybe I can quickly fix fix up the dress and hope for the best that I get to, like, you know, at least even be at the event. Because So I get there, people are just like, oh, my God, you look right off the promo pictures. I was like, yeah, that was my point. So, you know, the staffers are just like, you know, I'm just there. I ask, I ask a question to the audience, and the cast is like, oh, my God, you're actually wearing Victoria's dress. So the picture with the cast is because the uh, the guy who runs a production company, Damien Timner, who's on the far, he's the white guy on the far right, he basically was like, I want a picture of my cell phone. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then from then on, they were just like, 
that was kind of my thing going to the PBS events dressed up as the character in question which um the Victorian one was fun just because I could be a queen for a day like I people know. like earth seeing to me and stuff it was a lot of fun who does and I also love the show unfortunately I don't think it's coming back for a fourth season I don't have not I think with corona and other stuff I don't think they're ever gonna have another season but it it was fun while it lasted because I actually did. I actually did some blogging episode reviews, and it was so much fun. That fandom was a lot of fun. It, like while it lasted, it was great times. Um, and then we have a couple. We have three or four uh, pole dark inspirations, right? So yeah. Elizabeth Warlegan. Yes, this one was from one of our local um, costuming meetups in New York. I think two summers ago. So I made this Elizabeth dress. Um, yeah, I like the, I just picked it for the background. Um, I basically made this out of stuff I found in Mood on the clearance rack. It is polyester Moira and some kind of polyester taffeta. Another shot that I think is really picturesque is the one of you as Kitty Despard. Yes, this was in, yes, this was taken in Fort Charm Park in Manhattan. Um, this was from last, this was last fall that we did this shoot. Um, it was another costuming meetup. It was Regency theme, so I decided to call this Kitty Desperate. Uh, so far, nobody else has ever made anything from her, obviously, because she was the last season of Old Ark, and uh, so far to date, the only character of color that had speaking lines, because there's some random extras here and there. But uh, yeah, she was the first and only. And she was actually based on a real person, which a lot of people in the fandom did not know about until it happened because his bio the biography of her husband, Ned, was kind of like buried in a library somewhere until they dug it up and it was not mentioned in the original books. So that caused problems on top of your- Wait, so she was a real person? Yes, she was. She was a real person. And let, hold on a second. I'm actually gonna show you something. Okay. Oh, I'm here for it. Oh, all right. So while you're gone, I'm going to take a couple sips of my drink. Yeah. This is his, this is Ned's biography. The unfortunate Colonel Desperate. Of course, we all know he dies, but Mike J brilliantly plotted out his entire life for us. And the trial, which is clearly like a setup hot mess fest, by um, Joseph Merceron. He also is real. He is also legitly kind of a gangster. He controlled um, this, the poor part of London and just ran it like, he was kind of like Boss Tweed. So yeah, uh, Julian Woodford uh, dug up into his life and the trial, Ned's trial is actually in here among other crimes and, you know, mafia-esque activity in there. So yeah, there to those nobody else in the fandom who really read the actual books. Like people have seen articles about it, but I went in there and actually before the show even aired, went and did the research about her. So when I did, I made this outfit based off of the dress is um dress is cotton, some stash fabric that just worked really well based off the promo pictures. And the little Spencer is basically some check fabric I found in Joanne's for super cheap. And it, yeah, it was actually one of my cheapest costumes because <laughs> I, oh, I literally, that was like 10, like five bucks a yard at Joanne's. It's like, this is awesome. People are just like, this is taking screen time away from my favorite characters and my favorite relationships. So some of it was racist and some of it was just like, oh, I don't understand why black fans would attach themselves to her so much i'm like yeah because we're seeing ourselves in the show for the first time because of course we love the other women characters and there's somebody who actually looks like us on the screen it's really it just hits in a different way you know it does so people did not understand at all and it is what it is okay and yes you do have two two pictures of you as demelza first in the red costume and then in the green yeah the red is basically my first ever attempt sewing something historical from, this is from August, this is from July 2015. I made that dress in nine days. I will say this. Do not diminish your first attempt. No. Everyone has to start somewhere. And my first attempt wasn't even an attempt at me sewing. I just bought a costume on Amazon. So. And yeah. then other Demelza is, that's her season three green dress. Um, she actually wears it when she meets Hugh Armitage, who's another one of my favorite characters from the books, oddly enough. 
the one the guy everybody hates I know <laughs> um everybody hates him but I love him that's a good uh, shot thank you yeah so that's my uh Demelza journey like really fun if I haven't said it already go to her Instagram and look at all her photos she, yeah because um, I had a lot of selfies with, with famous British actors yeah uh, a lot of I meeting folks well, behind my favorite things is kind of like I like doing it also too, since I've worked at Doctor Who conventions it's kind of easy to meet people and living in Brooklyn of course at some point somebody's gonna roll in here for a junket you know pre-COVID but yeah it's yeah, pre-COVID yeah pre-COVID between the theater and junkets and the, the, the comic cons I have a lot of just pictures so, of awesomeness. so you, you already kind of shouted out to PBS um are there any other groups or organizations that you want to give a shout out to that you would recommend new people try, look up, especially yeah. for COVID when we're able to get together again? Yeah. Now online, um, for people of color who want to, you know, find other folks of color, um, if you are specifically into Outlander, um, there is a group on Twitter called the Black Landers with a Z, Black Landers, and all we do in that group and blog is basically well right now there's a lot of pop culture stuff and general politics stuff because we you know outlanders on session when we are in session we have the convos every week which basically break down each episode and a bunch of us rotate it out a different set of people comment on it every week so that's um that's it's also good too because some of these fandoms don't always have folks of color like blogging about it so if you like outlander definitely check blacklanders out i'm also going to shout out um for people who like general pop culture fandom stuff, I've been kind of contributing to um, another collective called Black Girls Create on Twitter. They have, I haven't written for their blog yet, but I'm working on stuff for their digital convention. So um, that'll be on YouTube later because they're calling it the Kumba Kickback. And it's about just, I'm doing a panel on being Black and Anglophile um, fandom and also fandom, uh, coping with being Black and fandom spaces that are always friendly. So that I'm sure this video will come out after the, the actual event, but it'll be on their YouTube and website after the fact. And my last shout out uh, group, I guess, would be if you like Jane Austen and but don't want to deal with like racist people, um, Drunk Austen has your back. They're a Twitter page, Facebook page, all that stuff, fun stuff. Um, both of the admins are very, you know, progressive and one. One of the admins is Latinx, so you can guarantee that there's never going to be anybody, like, say anything stupid and racist on her page, because they're going to block them and mock them, so. Always so good. I'll drink to that. Drunk Austin. Yes, exactly. Yes, let's drink, yeah. Let's drink some people, folks of color doing things. Yeah, so I'm going to shout those three full, um, sets of collectives out. Um, okay, and so. I'll put those links down at the bottom. So what is something we would not guess about you? Because in a weird way, because I'm a journalist by trade, like my life is kind of like a semi-open book, especially if you go on social media. The next question is, okay, well, you've talked about a little, you talked about who you fangirled over. <laughs> so we have an idea of that, but who were you mentored by along the way? And who have you mentored? Okay, this is, the mentorship question is tricky. I mean, for hmm, mentorship, because mentorship does mean a lot of different things. Um, I would say um, as a collective, the Blacklanders, women have helped me out a lot because a lot of them were, I'm in, I'm only in my early 30s and some, we have older members in the group. So they've, you know, we've done a lot of like discourse in that regard. Costuming wise, I don't really have a men. I don't really have a mentor in that sense because I am mostly self-taught like and I just research and research and practice and practice on my own until like I don't never I don't have a specific costume mentor I would just say I would say the black lenders are the closest in like this realm of life that I've seen as mentorships in terms of me helping other people I'd like to think um that I'm there's quite a few of my friends on Twitter who after I've discussed with them issues about you know costuming and you know and historical period dramas and being black uh, quite a few people have said like i've learned so much from you amanda i'm like ah, i don't wanna, i don't want to like blow up people's spots in particular but i've gotten quite a few little messages like i've learned so much just from following you that's been 
great to hear because every day every time there's like some troll incident I'm like cool at least I taught somebody something um so my takeaway my takeaway from that is when someone does help you tell them about it like Mm -hmm. you know let them know they may they may need to hear that. They may need need to hear that something that you did for them helped them. Whether yeah. you consider that mentorship, and I do, in in, a, in its own way, that is mentorship. You reaching out and helping someone else, giving them a tip, telling even you telling me about the Black Landers group. That was that's partly mentorship because you're helping me connect with other women like me who love yeah. the show and who also understand my experience as a Black woman, right? Yeah. It's Hopefully been- those people also pay it forward, even if it never comes back to you. Um, exactly. Pay it forward somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah, I, that's what I try to do. Um, let's see. Uh, favorite inspirational quote. Do you have one? Okay, so this is a weird, weird, weird way of inspiration, but, you know, whatever works. So when I started out my costuming journey, one quote from Don Draper on Mad Men stuck out with me in my head. Don Draper? I, yeah, I know. I know. He's incredibly problematic, but the fact I found inspiration from something he said, you know, we'll like, roll it. So he said, if you don't like what is going, what is being said, change the conversation. And that's been something that has guided me with, through costuming in general, historical costuming, finding people who agree, finding people who want racial equality. And also with Pure Drop Fandom, like I did not like the way people were talking about certain characters and plots and how black history and next history intersects with our fandom so i decided to change the conversation by speaking out on twitter and you know facebook as well i actually run um i've been helping people with running you know spaces that are less you know toxic so it's that has been kind of guiding me in i'll take it yeah i'll take it (laughs) i think it i think it is good advice even problematic people can give you good advice like Not everything they think is garbage. Exactly. Um, and if you could give a new costumer one piece of advice, what would it be? My main advice for a beginner costumer is that if, especially if you're into historical, your first attempt does not have to be 100% right. I tend to take my favorite characters go through one version of an outfit and then pick it apart or or reassemble it and then that's how I learned how to different sewing techniques. Like now my thing my big jumping point skills wise is hand sewing. I barely hand sew. So the only way I realize I'm gonna have to get motivated to do it is if I take something we're really obsessed with and use that for hand sewing practice. So I'm gonna take one of the pole dark costumes I've seen I'm like you know what I'm gonna do it because I already know the patterning I already know my measurements I just want to just make it by hand so I'm gonna probably take another like Demelza or something dress more power to you and then I'm also gonna make one thing that I can actually pass off as legit at for events in the future but yeah that's sort of that's sort of my main advice it doesn't have to be perfect for a summer round and you can learn by you only are really learning these things by practice so it's better to take an old project and look at it again. So I think what I'm hearing is do the best you can. Mm-hmm. And when you know better, do better. Pretty much. Don't be afraid to like take that dress that was, you know, something that you did three years ago and you did the best you could then and apply some new techniques and some new knowledge to it. And that can apply in so many parts of your life. But I'm glad that that, that is something that you would tell new customers because I think it, it would have really helped me to hear that when I started. All right. I think one of my last questions to you is what are all your handles and URLs? Tell us one more time. I'll also okay. put it below. So f- Facebook, if you search my real name, am I might come up. I might not. It depends on whatever security settings I did years ago. I don't know. But on Twitter, I am at Amanda R. Prescott because my whole name couldn't fit on Twitter. So I just have the R instead of Ray. Oh well. On Instagram, I'm at Amanda Poldark. My old Facebook costume page, which I haven't updated in years, but you can see some of my older photos on there. It's Amanda Poldark cosplay. In between the fangirling, also calling people out on not oh, on allowing bigots in their spaces. Happens a lot on Facebook, especially because of course a lot of the older folks are on there and they're not. Hey, they're not hey, with it. hey! I am an old person on Facebook. 
<laughs> okay, not all old people though. Like old white people on Facebook is like Ugh. no, because no, some I like, I've learned so much from from I've learned so much from older women of color, but yet I don't have the photos. An icon in ways is Statler Wardorf from the uh, Muppets. They those old haters in the back of the balcony, like throwing shade and getting angry people. Uh, I feel that a lot, especially at work. Because at work on at work, I I'm a social media manager, so I have to read like ridiculous comments from the general public, and I'm like, I love it. Them. I'm literally I'm virtually heckling them, although they don't see it, but I'm heckling them in my mind. Style of work was always there. Okay. Like, acting as like my they're honestly in a weird way they're like the original shade room if you think about it i mean they're, they're yeah. the original haters ball they're the original black twitter mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. i'm sorry i think i've your poor this is amazing actually <laughs> isn't it yes it is all right um i think we are at the end of our show um amanda i can't thank you enough for being here with me um Hopefully, now that I know people are going to watch this, I need to post some things. I'll post some whips up and stuff and interact with folks because it's been a while. This time has been weird for me because I'm very much focused on, like, making things for events. Not So now switching to making things for making sake is a little weird. It is. This is we're just living in a weird dystopian yeah. <laughs> craziness right now. And I realize, I'm like, you know what? Sewing, it will actually help me stay sane because, again, like, in like in journalism, like you don't know what you you cannot imagine what we've been we're, like reading at the same time as us trying to do our jobs and reading all this stuff. It's like fear-inducing. So getting back into something, you know, like wearing pretty dresses, I think is will be healthy for me emotionally. So yeah. And so I will see you on social media, of course. Yeah. Um, stay safe out there, you guys, and be excellent to each other. Bye. Bye.